Hello everybody and welcome back to another market analysis. Now, as many of you know, uh, something crazy just happened a couple of days ago. Something that is going to shake up the RuneScape economy more than ever before. Now, what I'm referring to are the integrity changes and potential buffs and nerfs of a plethora of different items. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at the wider scale impact that these changes will have on the economy. We're going to look at individual items as well as more on a macro level. I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, if you do, don't forget to leave the video a like. I'm going to take each like and invest it into one Tesla stock, so I'll probably be rich by the end of the video. Now, just a few days ago, JKX released one of the biggest poll blogs of the last couple of years, or at least the most important. Now, it was a blog detailing a bunch of equipment rebalancing that they're looking to do very soon. Now, very importantly, these changes are not going to be polled, which means we're going to get some variant of these changes. Now, of course, they are going to take our feedback into account. However, it looks like no matter what, we are going to get at least some of these changes. Uh, so there are a bunch of items that are getting nerfed, uh, a few items that are getting buffed, and there's a lot of collateral damage, both good and bad. In the end, though, looking at my bank value, it has actually gone up. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute, though. Okay, let's start off here in order with the Basilisk Jaw. Now, the Jaw has seen a tremendous crash. <laughs> Holding pretty steady at around 20 mil for the last month or so, it immediately crashed down by about 4 mil, and now is down to around 13 or 14 mil and crashing more every day. Now, the Jaw has seen one of the biggest decreases, and that is mainly because not only did the stats get nerfed, it went from a strength bonus of 6 down to 5, but more importantly, the actual content itself is going to get a nerf or at least been made easier. Now essentially, the Basilisk Knights which you kill are going to be much weaker, easier to kill, and are going to drop the Basilisk Jaw at a similar rate. They're no longer going to have a special attack either, so they're going to be really easy to AFK, and in the end, a lot more people are going to be killing them, a lot more Jaws are going to be dropped, and thus the price is going to be much lower once these nerfs come through. Now obviously all these price changes right now are all speculation, nothing has actually changed yet fundamentally. But as always, the market does take future information and prices itself into the price we see today. People truly believe that these changes are going through, and for good reason, and that these changes are going to make the Bastard's Jaw a lot more common, and thus cheaper, and that is why we've seen such a big price decrease. Okay, so next up here we have the Toxic Blowpipe, probably the item that received the biggest actual nerf of all. The ranged attack bonus was cut in half, the ranged strength was reduced by 15, and the darts that it uses were also nerfed. A very substantial nerf all across the board. And so unsurprisingly, the price has tanked from around 3.7 mil down to around 3.1 mil. Percentage-wise, that's actually not as big of a decrease as the Basilisk Jaw, but because the Toxic Blowpipe is already so cheap, it's not as likely to drop by such a significant amount. Now one thing to keep in mind though is that although only the Toxic Blowpipe is being nerfed, the price of the Serpentine Helm, the Toxic Trident, and the Zolar Scales are all linked together. Now that marriage between the different items was initially done to help keep the prices even, but that also has the negative effect of everything crashing in price when one of the items has been nerfed. For example, Zolar Scales going from 180 immediately down to 130, that is a huge decrease for Zolar Scales, we've not seen something like that in a long time. The Toxic Trident also saw a very big crash from 3.7 down to 3.2, pretty similar to the Blowpipe as well. The Serpentine Helm also saw a pretty big drop from around 3.6 mil going down to 3.2 mil already. Uh, personally, I think these items are already kind of at an appropriate price. I don't really think this crash is that warranted. For one, people are still definitely going to want to use the Toxic Trident. Uh, people are still going to use the Serpentine Helm. Even after nerf, the blowpipe is still going to be used some places. Now, I definitely think for a lot of these, it's just going to be a quick overreaction. And then eventually, we're going to get a correction in the next few months. But who knows? Okay, now we have the Twisted Bow, which, uh, in my opinion, actually just got buffed. Now, you might be wondering why I'm saying that, because on paper, it did lose stats. The Twisted Bow did get its prayer bonus removed, which means it is objectively weaker. That said though, the price has gone up a significant amount for the Twisted Bow, jumping up almost 40 mil in a single day, and it's still, just a few days later, over 30 mil above where it was before. Now, in my opinion, the objective strength of the Twisted Bow has actually gone up. For example, if the Twisted Bow is like, uh, I don't know, Amazon, that's Jeff Bezos. And the Toxic Blowpipe is like Walmart. If Walmart all of a sudden closes, then good old Jeff Bezos is going to be worth a lot more money. 
stock in Twisted Bow is going up and that is mainly because some of its major competitors are going to be much much weaker and not nearly as effective where the Twisted Bow essentially got off completely unscathed from any nerfs. Now another item in the very same category is that is the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. The Dragon Hunter Crossbow actually received very little changes. Technically it did receive a small nerf. The actual range level requirement is now 70 versus 65 but nothing fundamentally changed. That said, the Dragon Hunter Crossbow went from 90 mil up to 110 mil. That is a huge increase, more so percentage wise than the Twisted Bow. Again, because the Toxic Blowpipe is now gonna be a lot weaker, the Dragon Hunter Crossbow becomes a much better option, especially for those who can't afford a Twisted Bow. The Dragon Hunter Crossbow is now one of the few items to bridge that gap. I mean, certainly it's not the only item. We have the Dragon Crossbow as well, going from around 1.5 mil. Uh, doubling in price pretty much immediately and even a couple days later still being worth a fair bit more and now from what we can see so far by removing some of the power from the blowpipe it has kind of spread the value among a couple of different weapons uh, which I definitely think is pretty interesting. Okay next up here we have the Din's Bulwark. <laughs> the Din's once again just got nerfed and nothing too much more to say about that one. The Din's got its defensive bonuses nerfed fairly substantially and that has definitely been reflected in the price, going from around 4.6 mil on January 21st down to 3.9 mil pretty much overnight. And really, at this point, this is just kind of people guessing. If the DINs turns out to be awful once people get a chance to test it, it could drop a lot further. I mean, same thing for the blowpipe, honestly. We don't know exactly yet how the meta is going to form, what is actually still going to be good, what's going to be bad. Uh, so things are definitely still going to be subject to some pretty wild volatility, in my opinion. Now another item I wasn't really sure about were darts. They immediately crashed a significant amount from around 2400 down to 1900. That was just in a few minutes. But they bounced back relatively quickly and rune darts and adamant darts are fairly unaffected. Now one of the most integral nerfs that is coming with all of these changes is the nerf to dehyde. Now black dehyde, green dehyde, red dehyde, whatever, their prices aren't changing much because they're already at alk price. Nothing to change here, but there are some associated items that has changed a lot. Now, Carol's is probably the ranged armor that has changed the most. Uh, pretty well doubling in price on the first day after these notes were released, and still holding a significantly higher value than they were just a day ago, going from around 2.5 mil, settling now at around 4 mil. That is the highest they've been in a long time. Look at that. Now the reason we've seen such a big change here is because, well, Dehyde is getting nerfed. And of course, one of the closest armor sets to it in both price and uh, stat allocation is Carol's. Now even though Carol's has not been changed at all, similar to the Dragon Hunter Crossbow and the Twisted Bow, it has just gotten objectively stronger within the realm of ranged armor, which means its value is going up. Now interestingly, for higher tier armors, not much has changed. The armadillo chest plate, for example, was already in its own league. It does seem like it bumped up temporarily, but nothing more than that. These changes really haven't affected that too much. Alright, so now we're going to move on to the buffs. Now, a lot of them involved really inexpensive weapons, so as far as their prices, they're not going to change too much. But there are a couple interesting ones. Now first up here we have the Dragon Bow Necklace, which for a long time now is absolutely worthless. We can see 57k or so for pretty much the last three or four months, now immediately jumping up to 600k and still now being worth around five times more than it was before. This is an item I definitely thought about picking up a while ago, probably should have done it. Now the Dragon Bow Necklace is getting a huge buff to its stat allocation as well as the special effect is getting buffed as well. As still though, pretty much overnight it went up a thousand percent and still this morning it's still up over 500 percent, so probably one of the biggest percent increases of any of the items. Okay, another interesting one is the Dragon Warhammer. Now the Dragon Warhammer did not get any of the stats changed on it, yet the price is still actually increased a substantial amount, going from around 38 mil before any of these changes, now up to 43 mil. That, that is a huge difference. And uh, now what did they actually change? Well, going forward, the Dragon Warhammer will now actually require a strength to equip rather than attack. Essentially what that means is strength pure accounts can now optionally use the Dragon Warhammer which makes it a lot more desirable for a new section of the community. I think it's actually pretty cool that that minor change has actually given it a lot more value. Now that is it for all of the individual changes but obviously that is not the end of it. Each of these changes can have widespread ramifications throughout the economy 
and the meta. As we can tell from items like the Kirill's armor set, Dragon Hunter crossbow, uh, things can shift a lot without any actual changes being made to those items. Who knows what the ramifications are going to be throughout the long term? What is going to be filling the void for Dehyde, for the Toxic Blowpipe? How are PVM moneymakers going to be affected? And in the end, there are just too many variables to say for sure at this point, especially since these changes have not actually come into effect yet, as the widespread changes are definitely hard to predict. Now, I checked my bank value before and after this blog went out, and my bank value actually went up by about 100 mil. Now obviously this is kind of anecdotal, but from what I can see, more weapons have become stronger than those that have become weaker. Now obviously, shaking up the meta to this amount is a little terrifying. One part of me is definitely a little worried, and another part of me is kind of just excited to see what happens. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my YouTube members. Thank you to Brian Robinson, Zach Stoppa, Cappy, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all subscribing at the Dragon tier. You guys are very generous, I really appreciate it. And also a big thank you to some new Runite tier members, Grumpy Chef, Timothy Chen, joining Birdbot, and Base Titch. As always guys, if you are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in my videos, get access to my video release schedule, and of course, get a custom Discord role. Anyway guys, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.